Hey there, welcome everybody. My name's John Cashew. I'm the editor-in-chief and founder of South Jersey Beer Scene. And we are here on our first official Thirsty Thursday with Cape May Brewing Company, uh, presented by South Jersey Beer Scene. Got a couple guests here tonight. We're gonna talk about all things CNBC, what's going on now and what they got going on for the holidays. And my two guests tonight, we got first I got in the upper right square is uh, Mark Graves. He is the uh, packaging general, ma uh, the packaging manager, I guess is what we're calling you. Mark, I'm sorry, I stumbled all over my words there. And uh, down the bottom, we have uh, Chris Costello, who's the general manager of the tasting room down there at CNBC. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing well. I'm good. How, How about you yourself, well? Tom? I'm doing great. So glad to be here for the first of what we hope is a monthly series. I know it's kind of crazy times right now, but this is one way we can get and tell you what's going on. Um, at CNBC, you know, one of the countries, I'm going to say, sought after breweries right now. I mean, you guys are really... Uh, done a really, really great job of making yourself a sought after beer company. Um, and knowing a lot of the people that I do know, do know there, I'm not surprised in the least. So that's, that's, uh, that's a good thing. Thank so, you. uh, Thank you so real quick, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk real quick about how's things down to CNBC here on a uh, pandemic, pandemic city. Uh, how's it going down? How's, so tell us what's going on, like how you've been managing the tasting room a little bit there, Chris. Um, so throughout this whole year, we've just been really flexible with what we need to do, what's coming in, you know, what new precautions are coming out. Um, so right now we're really operating our outdoor beer garden, uh, as well as our botanical garden when the uh, weather decides to cooperate with us, which in the month of October has been a little iffy. Uh, and then we every day have our boutique open for uh, beer and merchandise to go. Uh, and, you know, earlier this year, we rolled out a, a new program that we've never done before, which was pre-orders for beer. Um, you know, we've had a lot of our hits that uh, we get feedback from our fans that, you know, they can't always make it down first thing on a Friday or Saturday morning. Sometimes the beer is sold out. So this gives everybody from, you know, not just Cape May County, but, you know, to our fans, Philadelphia, upstate New Jersey, upstate New Jersey and New York, that gives them an opportunity to make sure they can pick some of that up. So that's been that's been a lot of fun to operate this year. It's great. You guys have a lot of great releases and the guy up there on top of you, I don't know how they is one of the guys that uh, coordinates those releases with the packaging and making sure the liquid gets out there. So it's been a little bit different this year, Mark, and you've been around the business a little bit. Tell us the challenges that you've had to keep up with this schedule, aggressive schedule, I would say of great new beers that Kate May has put out this year, surprising even us insiders with some of the stuff. And we'll talk a little bit more about one that shocked me today. Um, but tell, tell me what the challenges of, of your job is uh, right now during this time. Uh, yeah, it's really been a fun summer. It's been, it's definitely been challenging, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, kind of Cape May, especially when um, we turn into the summer months, a lot of people come down. Uh, it almost turns into having two separate breweries. You have the tasting room with a lot of releases and then you have um, distribution. So it's, it's been interesting from a standpoint, especially with the cans, but um, mm -hmm. we are in a room shortage, but we do have a great partner with uh, Ardar, our can supplier. Um, we've had some challenges, but we've been very lucky. There's a lot of other people that are worse off, but it's, it's been good, but challenging for sure. Yeah. And I think going back, one of the things that's great about, you know, being Kate May and, you know, everybody's like, oh, they're the big guy on the block, but you guys are putting out beer. That's incredible. And I want to get to the beer quickly because, you know, that's why we're here. We're here for the beer. So the first one I want to talk about is, um, something that dropped last week and it's was one of my top 10 lists last year. Uh, a couple other people talked about that. So uh, this lovely guy right here, the Coquito. Um, so and I, we were talking earlier, I brought out the uh, really old school CNBC glass here, um, you know, out of the cabinet to, to drink this. And I was looking so forward to this. It's different a little bit this year. So let's talk about Coquito. Let's talk about what it is for those who don't know what Coquito is and how great it turned out in a beer. Whoever wants um, to do that. Mark, if you don't mind, I'll start. I'll talk about some of the inspiration yeah. and then I can uh, let Mark talk a little bit more about the actual liquid itself. So, um, you know, I sit on one of our committees that we do a lot of the backdoor <clears> stuff. <throat> uh, I sit on this with uh, Courtney Rosenberg and Brian Hink as well, uh, where we just kind of come up with some fun stuff to do in the tasting room only. And last year we were, you know, tossing around ideas about holiday drinks that, you know, you don't see very often in beer. And Cojito came up, which is a uh, traditional Puerto Rican holiday drink. Um, there's a lot of like, you know, kind of cream base to it, but there's a little like, spice that comes in it as well. 
Uh, so we talked about this great idea and that's when we turned over to Brian and said, okay, Brian, how can you make this happen? Uh, and, you know, he tossed some ideas around. That we uh, Chris seems to have lost his mic there, Mark. Are you there? Yep, I'm here. Yeah, Chris, you lost your mic there for a second, Chris. So we, we can you hear us here? There you go. You're back. All right. It's always right. something with me. When that, no, you're, it's fine. You look great tonight. You know, you're not foggy at all. So let's go back. When you talk to Brian, we got to the part where you would talk to Brian about making it happen. We heard up to that point. Yeah. So, you know, the, the really fun thing we get to do is we come up with these crazy ideas and then we put it all on Brian to actually make what's in our minds come out in the liquid. Um, so he had a good idea with our cream ale and we decided to put it in some barrels uh, along with some other spices. And uh, well, I'll say it doesn't taste exactly like a traditional cojito. Um, it's our version of a cojito, which is cool because, you know, each individual person that makes their own cojito, they all taste a little bit different. Um, and, you know, I was able to talk to some people that make this every year and, you know, they definitely can see where the inspiration, where, it, where it ties together. Uh, so really excited to do this again this year. Um, you know, definitely a lot of people are asking about it. As you said, you had a lot of friends that loved it. So mm -hmm. we were really happy to come out with it again this year. One of my friends who uh, works for me, he's a Puerto Rican by way of Germany. And he makes this for me every year as part of my Christmas gift. I made him stop at my house on the way home yesterday to grab one to tell me what he thought. He said, when can you bring me more? <laughs> so, I mean, you got the spice flavoring down really, really well. It's creamy, um, but it will kick in the butt a little bit. So, I mean, it's it's not a, it's a one off or, you know, for a big guy like me and Mark, maybe a two off. But I mean, it's a 14%, isn't it? Somewhere in yeah. that neighborhood. Yeah, this yes. year's a pretty big brew. It's a... Uh... Definitely a whopper, but it's, I guess it's sort of like that winter warmer, you know, you want something nice going into the holidays when it gets and cold. It doesn't taste, it doesn't taste boozy, not even in the least bit. I mean, so it'll sneak up on you, but a really great job. It's uh, better than, it's it's as good as, if not better than last year's version. Um, one of our, one of my friends is Guy Zampa from Little Water Distillery, who knows a little bit about rum, knows a little bit about spirits. And he, you know, he's one of the first guys that said, hey, everybody's got to try this beer. And that's one of the reasons other than it was Cape May and I try all your beer. Uh, we got it. So really, really, really great job. Um, so yeah, that's the one beer. Uh, we it's definitely one of those. It's like a labor of love with us. You know, it, it started with Brian and Chris and, and kind of Courtney um, mastering it and kind of coming up with the idea. And then, you know, even to guys like uh, JP, our, our chef and Solomon extraordinaire who, you know, in I think it was last year's iteration, we had three people toasting coconut back of house. And this year he did it himself, just powered through it. It was like a hundred pounds, something like that. And the whole brewery just smells like cookies and Christmas. And we're all hating life. <laughs> we're like, what? <laughs> where's the food? And hey, this uh, was, go ahead, I'm yeah, sorry. It's just, you know, I, I think it's a labor of love and, and Brian, Chris and Courtney, I think did a great job conceptualizing it. And, um, you know, even down the production crew just kind of nailed it on the head, especially the rum barrel age, the flavors, the so alcohol good. warmth really melds with the spices and, and the yeast. It's It came out good. Perfect. Um, and this is a, a brewery only release. So you won't find this anywhere on any shelves. It's only available down at the boutique. Um, and so, so you'll have to go down there and get it. It's worth the ride. It's funny. People are like, people will go down Breakwater Road and go, what's going on at Cape May Brewery today? There's a line down there. And I'm like, well, today's the Coquito. Um, and it brings me to my next super double secret beer that I saw sneak on the internet today. Um, as for those of you out in uh, out there in beer land, you know that the Bog is one of the favorite Cape May beers, beloved Cape May beers um, that's out there. And I saw today something little sneaky pop up on the old interwebs there, Chris. So tell me about uh, this little boutique only release that you got going on there. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, we've released uh, Cranberry Good Good, which is what we're talking about right here, uh, a few times now. Um, we were planning on having this come out Friday, um, but we decided why wait? Why not get it out to our fans now? Uh, you know, as you're planning up for your holidays, why not go and get your Cranberry Good Good? Um, and this beer started in, in a similar fashion to Cojito. Uh, you know, we were talking about the bog and how everyone loves bog, but we don't have it year round. And, 
kind of joking around, said, well, what if we made an imperial bog? Uh, and that is what started that cranberry good good. And I, I think the name just suits it perfectly. You know, it's it's cranberry good good, and it packs a it packs a bit more of a punch than the bog does. So it's definitely something we we're, we're having fun experimenting with that one as well. And it's cool. And I, I love I love the labeling. I love the way that you guys are keeping the uh, brewery only releases with that similar type of packaging. Mark, is that something that's a conscious effort of you guys? Yeah, no, for sure. With uh, Alicia and Courtney, they do an incredible job with the design, especially sort of the separation from distribution, as you could see with some of the cans in the background here and mm -hmm. our background or our backdoor series where it's, uh, you know, it's it's almost like uh, not cerebral, but um, an abstract. And there's some really cool visuals that we've seen in some of our most recent releases. I think Good Good was the first one that really popped. It's uh our labeling team at a uh, mod tech in Pensauk and that just does an incredible job. Um, and, and you're, and the nice thing I love about your branding, I mean, some years back you went through a rebranding and the new branding is so South Jersey, so Jersey shore, so recognizable. And it runs throughout your whole, your, all your branding, everything that you do. And uh, you can immediately spot a Cape May beer on the shelf, which is nice. Um, uh, and, and that's consistent. We see a lot of different things with labeling, but I love the fact that you guys have a consistency to your can. Uh, I know that if I see a can like this, I know somebody went down and muled it from the brewery. And if I see a can like we see in the background here, I know that somebody could pick it up. It's funny because just this, just this weekend, one of my friends that I work with, she was running around all of Ocean County looking for the bog. And that, that, I was like, She's like, the bog, I can't find the bog anywhere. And I was like, yeah, you better get in a time machine because that'll be the only time you're ever going to get it right now. So I think it's great that uh, you guys were able to uh, drop this one on us. And I think you know, there'll be a nice line there tomorrow at CNBC, but it moves fast. You guys are really, really efficient and you'll, and you'll be able to get the beer that you want there. So yeah, yeah, I want to uh, quick, um, just go back for a minute to Cojito. I just want to, anybody looking for it out there, um, we're getting relatively low in inventory. So I'd say if you want it, you definitely want to try to get out there this weekend uh, to make sure that you can scoop some of that up before it's gone. Yeah. And, and it's worth it. And it's worth it. You can get two for one if you go out there and get the good, good. So it's, yeah. it's definitely worth the trip. Uh, I'm going to talk about a project that you guys were involved with too. I think it's a second or third. I think it's the second year for Friendsgiving. Yes. Uh, Friendsgiving is a collaboration between several breweries in South Jersey and one over the bridge, I think, uh, 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 Dave, Dave Goldman and the guys over there are involved in it as well. So Friendsgiving is your collaboration beer that you guys all put together and donate the money back to local shelters and food banks and whatnot. So Mark, I know that you were involved a little bit. Tell us a little bit about Friendsgiving and the story about getting together with Tonewood and yeah. Urban Village. It was uh, and Double Nickel. Urban Village, Double Nickel and us the first year. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a fun one. It, um, you know, it kind of started off as like this, they, they thought of the idea as a potluck beer, uh, sort of everyone kind of bring their own ingredients, you know, like you bring mashed potatoes, you bring the dessert. And it, it was fun that way. Like, I think I was lucky enough to show up for one of the canning runs and it just, it, it was a really cool and everyone was just very excited about it. You know, we brought our hop that year, someone else brought some others and it just kind of came together. Um, and the cause was incredible. It was, I've never seen something like that. Like the, the craft beer industry is always such a, uh, it, you know, people are always just so collaborative and, and very nice to each other, but I've never seen anything like that. You know, we had suppliers that were just donating, uh, pack text, labels, cans, uh, malt, j just everything, um, you know, really to kind of emphasize the charity on it. You know, a lot, a lot of that went towards local food banks. Um, I think each brewery kind of picked their own um, food bank and local charity. Uh, and then this year we brought on the source out of uh, Colts Neck, New Jersey. So um, not, uh, they're not too shabby either. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, yes. they make solid brews. And uh, I think even this year they uh, brought in, it kind of spread to some breweries in Virginia. So oh, the that's idea very cool. Come incredible. I think in the two years we've raised somewhere around $200,000 that have gone directly to uh, uh, local food banks. And I, I think one of the things that uh, breweries in general are pretty charitable. Um, Kate May Brewing, uh, from my vantage point, always has something going on charitable, always. Um, City to Shore, you know, we do, you did some stuff, uh, you know, uh, over the summer and food drives and all this, and that brings us to 
your annual food and supply drive is coming up. And Chris, I know this starts on November 20th, which is tomorrow, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's talk a little about the, the food and supply drive that you have going on. For anybody that's coming to get Coquito and the good good, here's your instructions. <laughs> So we've, uh, for a number of years, we've always uh, had a food drive taking place in the tasting room. Uh, and every year it's, what can we do different? What can we do to, uh, you know, make raising food fun? Uh, you know, there's plenty of drop boxes all over the area. So what makes us different? Um, last year we participated in a game of Penny Wars where we got the whole company involved. Uh, obviously with the um, coin shortage that's going on this year, we didn't think that was the greatest idea. So we took an inspiration from that and um, split our company up into two teams, which we call the soul of the house and the heart of the house. Um, our soul of the house being uh, our Cape Beverage, our distributor, uh, as well as the tasting room team, and the heart of the house being production, uh, administration, marketing, accounting. Uh, we really see it, it's all the people that do the work behind the scenes, they're the heart, they're the, that give us, make it available to do what we do. And the soul, you know, we're able to get the beer into your hands. Uh, so what we're doing is having two drop boxes in the tasting room, uh, where we're encouraging people to bring them in uh, and really uh, pick which team that they like the decoration of the box better, and that's which one they can put their food into. Uh, and this food will benefit uh, food closets in Cape May County, uh, as well as food banks in Atlanta County, where Cape Beverage lives, our, uh, our distributor. Uh, we also open up the opportunity for monetary donations if people uh, you know, want to go onto our website, if they don't feel comfortable uh, coming out right now. Uh, and all those funds will go directly towards those uh, charities as well. So we've done a lot of work with the local food banks. And uh, I don't know if people know this, but Cape May County has the highest incidence of hungry children in the state. Um, Cape May County is the highest. So, you know, just from that. And, and we don't think of that when people who don't live here think of Cape May County. They think of the beach, the boardwalk. You know, 85 percent of Cape May County is farms. And, you know, people like regular guys in there making beer and, you know, you know, plowing the fields and doing that. We have a touristy trade, but, you know, this food food drives is such an incredible, incredible thing to do, especially for the local residents. And I love that you guys have really made a focus on Atlantic and uh, Cape May County, two of the most needy counties in the state to be able to to help out. So that that's really good. So we know that we're donating. Unlike if you donate somewhere else, it's going to stay local. It's going to stay into the places where you guys have immediate, will give immediate help. The community food bank is a great place. These local food banks during this pandemic have really been keeping people going. And, uh, you know, talking to Courtney and talking to Alicia, I just think that this is a home run. So if you're coming to pick up beer, bring a couple cans, bring a couple of this, throw a couple dollars in the, in the, in the, in the box. I mean, I think that, you know, they have a friendly competition going on, but you know who wins? Everybody wins. And, you know, they'll get some bragging rights going on for the box. But I think that uh, the point is, is that Cape May, Cape May County, uh, Cape May Brewery in particular, just a, just a huge, huge part of the business community, local community. And I thank you for that. And I think that that, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons that, you know, we love you so much and for the things you do. I sound like a big butt kisser, but it's true. You guys do do a lot for the community. Um, that being said, when we started the website, the first people that allowed us to do something was Cape May Brewing Company. They gave us a shot. And I think that we had a lot of friends locally that would do it. So, but of all the bigger guys, you guys opened the door for us and trusted us. And we do appreciate that. And uh, we think we've built a good relationship. And that's why we're able to do fun stuff like this together. So thank I want to thank everybody there too for letting us do, be a part of this. So okay, well, so we're enough glad of that. to be a part of it with you. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so great. Over the last four years, we've made a good relationship with everybody. And to see you guys growing in the leaps and bounds that you have. You know, from, you know, me going down there and trying to get some cans or some some bottles, actually, not cans, uh, to being able to get it everywhere. It's 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 a really cool story, especially South Jersey, especially through all the competition, especially through the seasons, you know, very seasonal community. So kudos to, to the whole team for that. Um, what else? So we got some other things that are going on at uh, CNBC at the tasting room. So tell us a couple other things that are coming up there and things that you want to talk about. We had some interesting conversation beforehand. I heard a little inside baseball. So let's talk about a couple holiday things they've got coming up there. Yeah. So uh, for the tasting room, uh, you know, next week's a big holiday week. Um, and, you know, we always want to not just get our beer, air, but our merchandise out. We have uh, a bunch of things coming out this week, uh, as well as some incentives on Black Friday to come out. We're going to be opening our doors at 8 a.m. 
uh, allowing just a few people at a time to come into the boutique to see what we have available uh, to get all those early Christmas presents. Uh, I have some of them on here, new hat, and new sweatshirt. Uh, we got we got plenty of stuff. Um, and we also have some exciting uh, beer stuff coming up in the next week. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to share exact dates, but to anyone listening, any uh, Apple Bomb fans out there, uh, stay tuned very soon for some exciting news around that. Uh, and also another holiday favorite that we have coming up is our um, Bells of Barley, which is, you know, definitely our holiday brew that we, we've done for, I believe this is our fourth year now doing it. Uh, we always do competing styles. So we have um, our quad, uh, which is uh, two versions. One is aged in Portuguese uh, barrels and the other one in orange liqueur barrels. So you get to see what those two variations look like, uh, as well as a really cool bottle to take home from that. Yeah, and that's just something I definitely pick up every year, and I know it's something people make the trip to go look for. I do have a question from uh, Eric Borner. Excuse me if I'm not saying your name right. How about some recommendations on your best beer float combos? I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here. So many of your brews make awesome floats. Crushing it and Caramel Core is a favorite. Kate May White and Rum Raisin kills it too. Do you guys have any kind of insight on something that you've heard people do there? Um. I'll say not so much in the beer float aspect, but if you want to talk beer slushies, I could talk about them for uh, a number of hours here. Um, we, we've seen a lot of success. We've had a lot of fun with different versions. Uh, we've done the bog slushy and the grove slushy in the tasting room for a couple summers now. Uh, we, we mixed up our bog a little bit this year and used a different mix. Uh, and I think it made it a little bit smoother, uh, not quite as tart as it had been in the past. Uh, and then we were playing around with the grove at the end of the year as well. And I think people seem to like that. Um, but you know, I, I hear tons of people that talk about mixing our beer. Uh, if anybody ever comes into the tasting room, there's like the hidden menu that all of our, uh, our regulars, our frequent fillers talk about. Uh, I mean, one of my favorite, and I think it was my first week in the tasting room, somebody asked me for root of all evil. And I remember turning around to a bartender and I said, I, I don't know what root of all evil is. Are they at the wrong brewery? And they're like, no, Chris, that's, that's root beer in devil's reach. And I was like, oh, oh all right. That's so yeah. That's, uh, that's so, one of the favorites I would say in the uh, tasting room. Uh, I'm getting from Cape May Brewing Company, uh, Mop Witter and Vanilla Bean. You know, and, and Mop Witter, I always talk when Mop Witter comes out, and I know you guys, did you just do cans? Not, I think cans came out yes. from Mop Witter? Yes. So tell us about Mop Witter. I mean, you, Mop Witter and Corrosion are my two favorite Cape May beers that, and Turtle Gut, but we're not going to talk about Turtle Gut. Um, they're like, Tell us about mop water, Mark or Chris. Fill us in on mop water and tell us what it is. Uh, mop water is just you know that that fall spice ale. It's the five spice, the like cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, ginger, um, just sort of like a, a warm apple pie. Uh, it's been around for a while for us, uh, named after the cheap mop man himself, Bob Krill, um, <laughs> and it uh, it's become a fan favorite. You know, we we kind of had a very small release last year. <clears throat> Uh, almost sort of like, you know, okay, it's going down a bit. And just the social media storm was incredible. So we brought it back this year. And um, it, it's one of my favorite beers. I, I really enjoy it when it comes around this time of year. Uh, Vincent, uh, I'm not going to even try the last name. Vincent, I have a weird last name. I, I can't. But uh, one of his favorites, Mop Water and Crushing It. Just so many, so much good brew. And, and you know what? That's that's true. I mean, the way that, you know, we've seen the different incarnations of, you know, your Barrel Age series with the Keel and the award-winning beers that you put out there. And I feel like you guys have just grown so much to see this Cojito. I keep saying Coquito because I'm American and I can say it, I'm butchering it, but Cojito and uh, the the imagination that you've done with the Crushing It series. Five years ago, if you would have told a guy that was going to drink an IPA that we're going to make a blueberry lemonade Crushing It and we're going to sell a billion cases of it, they would have said, you're not selling any of that. And it's one of those other beers that people were out looking for. Um, so to see that you guys were able, that the things that you've done have been amazing. Um, Chris Martin it wants me to tell you that he knows you guys. So. <laughs> Chris hey, Martin. Uh, <laughs> he's one of our guys that makes sure that all our fans that, you know, can't make it down to Cape May, that they can, they have the opportunity to buy the beer at their local liquor store or bar or wherever it is. So now without folks like Chris Martin at Cape Beverage, uh, you wouldn't be able to get this beer all over the state. So big thanks to those guys there as well. Chris Martin, America's house guest. Everywhere I go, if there's an event, there's Chris Martin. <laughs> Representing Cape May Beer Company. I mean, Cape May Brewery. Everywhere we go. Just one of the one of the my favorite people in all of the industry. Uh, thanks for watching, Chris. Um, Mark, as head of packaging, 
Tell yes. us a little bit about from how an idea, and we're gonna do this quickly. I know we don't have a lot of time, but how an idea goes from poster board to label and and how that how that works a little bit as the manager to get this. I know, so you're the guy everybody's going, when's it going out? When's it going out? When's it going out? How are we getting out of here? So tell us how that process works a little bit. You don't just say we're gonna slap the label on, but there's a little bit of a little bit of a process to it. So in layman's terms, tell us exactly, you know, tell us what, what goes on there. I think that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, really it's, it's a big part of it is kind of the, you know, the design process of it, you know, even with, with uh, Courtney, Chris and, and Brian, um, as well as uh, our production team um, with James and Brandon and Brian too, um, that, you know, if they're coming up with a new beer, they, they come up with, you know, why are we doing this? What is it, you know, to elicit something local, which you see on a lot of our artwork, um, is it, you know, a specific flavor pair with food, something like that. And once they kind of come up with an idea, it just kind of trickles down very naturally into our artwork. Um, from there on my end, you know, I, it's, I, I always joke, I don't really do much. I just put beer into cans and kegs and really my guys do that, but it's, um, it, it's a fun process. You know, I, I started out as a brewer in the industry. So to kind of really see that grain of glass and then, you know, I'm, really making I'm the last wall before it goes out to all the consumers to enjoy is just it's it's just that safeguard making sure that you have quality beer going out because it's you know um you know Chris and, and Brian could come up with the best beer in the world absolute world beater um if we screw it up in packaging it it doesn't matter so it's right. it, it's making sure raw materials are there and 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 making sure that the dreams of the people designing them all through to the uh, consumer. So it's, um, it, it's a fun job. It really is. You know, sometimes you, you hear stories and like, it's like, Oh, Oh, and the other side of production, you hear stories of this beer coming down the line and then you don't get it till it's like, all right, carb check. Let's make sure this is fine. And it's like, Oh, this is good. You guys weren't kidding. <laughs> yeah. And it's nice. And I know you as a brewer, that's how I, I know of you as a brewer and to take on this other new responsibility, well, not new, it newish responsibility I mean, you know, from grain to glass, exactly the process that goes through there. I think Kate May does a really good job of putting people in positions to succeed. You know, Chris obviously is in a position to succeed. And I know guys that came there from all over the place and uh, doing things, you know, that put you guys in a position to make great beer. So Kate May Brewing Company wants to know what is everyone's favorite CNBC beer. So I have my own favorite and I I'm going to go out there first. Follow the goal. I'm going to tell you right now, when Follow the Goal came out, as an IP, I love a lot of this stuff. When Follow the Goal came out, they got a keg of it at Seaville Tavern, which was my local watering hole at the time. When they ran out of it, I cried. I literally <laughs> cried that they didn't have any more Follow the Goal. I love it. It's uh, it's a great IPA. It hits, it hits every mark that it's supposed to hit. Uh, and uh, that's my favorite CNBC beer. One of them, if I had to pick one, that is one of them. Let's, uh, how about you, Chris? What do you, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about? You know, by by now, I would have thought I have a, an answer lined up for this, but I, I always struggle with this because I honestly do enjoy all of our beers. And I think that there's, I have a certain situation for every beer. Like I'll say coastal evacuation. Every time after I mow my lawn, I crack a, a coastal evac. No matter what time of day, whatever it is, that's what I'm drinking. But uh, I think my, my all-time favorite is still Corrosion. Um, mm -hmm. But I also say I still definitely drink Cape May IPA the most. It's, you know, it's always accessible. Uh, it's not too high in the ABV, so it's easy to drink, but, you know, it's kind of, and then usually whatever of our limited IPA series is out and that's probably what I'm drinking of the most at that time, which is, you know, where that foul of the goal falls into, uh, as well as a couple other beers that come out around the year. All right, cool. Mark. Uh, yeah, I'd say, you know, kind of of our, our year round persuasion, it's uh tan limes. I really enjoy mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, it's, it's very easy to drink, but you could also sit down and just really just enjoy it and pick it out. But um, one from our Barrel Age series that, you know, it was kind of a, we did it once, but absolutely love it is uh, Lady in Room 10. It was oh, uh, great beer. Out, um, plums and black currants. That one was special for me. That, that was a great beer. I know that uh, we drank that with Jimmy Baum on Gary yeah. Monterosa's What's on Tap show when that came out. And I was like, hey, do you got any more of that I can take home with me? So, and uh, Courtney who uh is is uh from K cnbc sir patient of personal favors oktoberfest or the next beer one of the beer tenders puts in her glass and i believe that 100 percent 
And I gotta um, say, John, if I can uh, give a shout out, I saw uh, Rob Evans was popping up a couple times talking about Honey Porter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Honey Porter is, you know, definitely a, a number one beer in our tasting room. It kind of often flies under the radar. Uh, but that was able to take home a uh, bronze medal at GABF last year. Yes. Uh, we, we put it in cans for the first time last year. And it's definitely, I think it's a Cape May County favorite. Uh, so that's a really, really cool beer that sometimes doesn't always get all the love that it deserves. So I wanted to give that one a shout out. Yeah, it's a good, it's, that's one of my favorites. I mean, it's been around forever. It's, it's great. I mean, it's consistent. It's something that, you know, when you open it up, it's going to taste the same way it did the last time that you got, well, that's how beers are supposed to be. But, I mean, it really is one of one of my favorite. Um, I do have some of the what's it the sale one? Oh, geez, the top, top sale. sale. I have a bottle of the top sale sitting oh, in man. my. How much in you there. want? To put that here. <laughs> so I'm, here's here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to save it so when we can all sit down and drink together, I'm going to bring that and we'll we'll share a beer together because I'll tell you what when that came out. I bought like five of them and I just stuck them away because that was another one Jimmy brought to our show at that time. And, uh, and Ryan, I think was there as well. And uh, that was a major award winner, a couple contests across the United States. Oh, I yeah. cannot wait to see what it is in that bottle when I open it up again. So yeah, I remember it was uh, when we came out on beer connoisseur magazine, it was, I yes. think it was like the best beer of the year. Number and, one. Uh, yeah. And Brian, Brian was right on the cover. It was really cool. And I remember I was like, man, I should I should really go over to the tasting room and get some before they're gone. Next thing I know, they're like, hey, top sale's gone. I think Chris messaged him. I'm like, no, no. It was funny because I called, I think it was Courtney at the time or Alicia, and I said, hey, uh, we're going to do something on top sale. Do you guys have any left? She's And I remember she said, you better get here quick. And I literally got in my car in Ocean View and drove down there, and I think he had four bottles left at the time. And uh, I did find some locally, but I have, I have one bottle sitting back there. Um, so we're getting ready to wrap things up. I want to thank you guys for being guests here tonight. This is fun. It's always fun to talk to my friends at CNBC. So to wrap things up, let's uh, talk. Let's go to you, Mark. What do you uh, got coming up? What do we got coming up? Uh, beer wise, or any secrets you want to drop? Or I'm just trying to entice something out of you. Nothing. You got nothing, right? I, I tried. Uh, plenty of cans. Um, hopefully, we keep going. Yeah. And, uh, and you guys. More cans everywhere because of cake distribution and your ability to get more cans out. Um, if, I'm your neighbor in my office. If yeah, I can't so. put more cans out, then I get cans. So that's how that usually works. Um, uh, Courtney's putting up, shoot our team an email at beer at katemaybrewery.com to chat further if you have any further questions. Um, really responsive on your website. And Chris, let's go over a couple things. What do we got coming out and where can people go to get it? And what times are you open to get that beer? Uh, so we are open every day, 12 to 7. Uh, as we talked about earlier, our, our newest releases are uh, Cranberry Good Good. Uh, one that we didn't talk about, we also came out with um, Swinging the Lamp, which is uh, an IPA that uh, came out this week in the tasting room, uh, but we'll be going out uh, full statewide uh, early next week, so you can get that anywhere. Um, and, and always pop in. We got a, a whole bunch of stuff on the board right now, pouring in the tasting room, a few tasting room exclusives there as well on draft. Uh, you know, we, we got a really nice beer garden set up. We got some heaters out there. Uh, thankfully, it looks like the weather is going to cooperate and we're going to have some nice sunny, warm days this next week ahead. So, you know, if you're in the area, stop by and uh, enjoy a, a pint in our tasting room and uh, hopefully get some beer and stuff to go. So great. So that's great stuff, guys. Thanks so much. And for Mark and for Chris, I'm John with South Jersey Beer Scene. You can just check us out at sjbeerscene.com. We have a lot of local stuff we cover from the bridges to the beaches and sometimes out a little further, depending where our friends have all moved to. Um, follow us on Instagram and follow us on uh, Facebook and all the other, you know, snap face and whatever's going on there. So thanks. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much for uh, having me be part of this. And uh, we'll see you for the next Thirsty Thursday in December, the week before Christmas. If I'm right, Courtney, if I'm wrong on that date, I will rescind it. But uh, we're going to try and do the third Thursday. So cheers, everybody. Be safe out there, and uh, thanks again, guys. Cheers. Thank you.